Hello and welcome to this video on the VBE multiplier. This circuit is a fundamental building block of amplifier designs and today we're going to look at it in the application of a class AB audio amplifier. Here is a look at the signal going into the output stage of an amplifier and the output itself which is driving a 4 ohm load. We see that the signals are nice and linear and are replicas of each other. The gain of the final output stage is a little less than 1. That's why the amplitudes aren't exactly equal. In order to achieve a nice output, we need to bias the output transistors properly. Right now we're viewing the waveforms when they're properly biased. I'll go ahead and decrease the bias voltage and we'll see what happens. When the transistor output stage is not biased properly, we create dead zones. These are the points where we go from positive to negative. There are two transistors in a class AB amplifier. The NPN transistor in the output stage is responsible for driving the positive waveform and the PMP transistor is responsible for driving the negative. The dead zone is created when both of these transistors are off. This is caused from improper biasing. Transistors require a certain amount of voltage at their base emitter junctions in order to be turned on. We get crossover distortion when they are not properly biased. Here's a closer look at the crossover distortion. I'll demonstrate why the VBE multiplier can be so valuable. I'll go ahead and increase the bias voltage and make the output signal more linear. This is the cure to crossover distortion, is to be able to control the amount of bias voltage we're applying to the output stage. Here's a generic class AB amplifier schematic. Going from left to right, we have our voltage source, our bias, and our output stage. As noted previously, we have one MPN transistor on the top of the circuit and a PMP transistor on the bottom. These help drive the speaker load. To do this, we need to overcome the turn on voltages of the transistors. We have the base emitter voltage of the MPN and the emitter base voltage of the PMP. This bias needs to overcome these two voltages, which in my case are about 0.7 volts, and that's a typical value for silicon transistors. One strategy could be to use diodes. These diodes have a fixed voltage drop that's going to be very close to the base emitter voltages of these transistors. However, the disadvantage is that we can't change the discrete values that happen when we forward bias the diodes. A typical value for a silicon PN diode is about 0.7 volts. You run some risk of crossover distortion when you can't control and tune in the bias voltage. Let's do some simple analysis to understand how the VBE multiplier works. We have R1, R2, and a MPN transistor. Let's focus our analysis on R2. One key concept in understanding the VBE multiplier is that the voltage across R2 is equal to the base emitter voltage. This is because the two are in parallel. Therefore, the voltage across R2 equals the base emitter voltage. Because we know the voltage across the resistor, we also know the current. If the current going through R2 is large enough, we can assume it's equal to the current going through R1. A rule of thumb to determine if it's large enough is that it's about 10 times the current going into the base of the transistor. This simplifies our analysis and in most cases is a good enough assumption. Now that we know the current going through R1 and R2, we know the total voltage bias. The total voltage bias is the sum of the voltages across R1 and R2. Here's the configuration we'll use in the class AB amplifier. I added two additional components here, which are current source resistors at the bottom and top of the VBE multiplier. Their value is 1 kilo ohm, and I chose equal value resistors of 4.7 kilo ohms for R1 and R2. Here are some DC measurements I made with my digital multimeter. There are two key takeaways here. One is that the voltages across the current source resistors 
RC1 and RC2 are essentially the same. There's less than 1% difference between them. This is good and an indication that your VBE multiplier is set up properly. The second takeaway is that the voltages across R1 and R2 are not exactly equal. There is about an 8% difference between the two. What accounts for this error is the input current going into the base of the MPN transistor. Here the actual currents going through R1, R2, and into the base of the MPN transistor. We don't violate the rule that there's 10 times as much current going through R2 as there is going into the base of the transistor. Now, in order to make the VBE multiplier a variable bias source, all we need to do is either replace R2 with the potentiometer or put a series potentiometer in line with R2. I would recommend doing a series potentiometer with a static resistor for best practice. However, if you're debugging or prototyping a circuit, a variable potentiometer in place of R2 will work. To show the flexibility of adding in a potentiometer, I'll demonstrate a wide voltage range. We can not only fine tune voltages, but also go over a large range. In this case, I go from about 1 volt to 7 volts DC. Here is my full circuit on the breadboard. I'd also like to note a power consumption advantage of using a VBE multiplier. If we dial in the bias voltage correctly, when our input gets turned off, we will not consume as much power. Notice how when the signal was on, we used more current than when it was off. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope you learn more about the VBE multiplier and the Class AB amplifier. Stay tuned for more content, and let me know what you think in the comment section.